Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by the amazing Anthony Jenkins. Anthony, how you doing today, man? I'm good, man. Ken, how are you? I am doing very well. I am so honored to have you here. But before we talk about why you're here, Anthony, I want the people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit. Um, Anthony is a lover of 80s, 90s, and early 2000s nostalgia pop culture, from music to movies, TV shows, fashion, you know, a little bit of everything, a little bit of memorabilia, as you can see there in the background. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony started on YouTube in 2013, you know, movie reviews, film-related news, vlogs, Blu-ray collections. Kind of took a little bit of a hiatus back in 2020, but I brought him on here so we could kind of twist his arm and try to get him back. But while we're waiting for him to come back to YouTube, uh, he's been creating a lot of social media content, doing his amazing photography. Um, so my first question is, what do I got to do to get you back to YouTube, man? What you got to do to get me back to you? Well, this is a start right here. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's a trick question because you're already back. Um, no, I, I, like I said, all of Anthony's social media links where you can check out all the social media content he's been doing, some of his amazing photography, all those links are in the description below, but, uh, what got you started on YouTube? What gave you the push to want to make that happen? Well, back in 2013, I was in middle school and during that time I've been watching like YouTube film reviewers, like for Stuckman, the flick pick, nostalgia critic, black Mirror comedy, Jeremy John, the smoke nose, and they've all been my inspiration for wanting to start a YouTube channel because I've been watching them like nonstop back to back, taking notes, getting inspiration for them and just seeing them how they critique movies and how they film their videos and edit them and how like they give on their full on passion. And it gave me the motivation to like, hey, if they can do this, I can do this as well. Right. Right. And like I said, I know that sometimes it can become a very heavy workload. So you need to take a little bit of a break. And I totally understand that. So you took the break from YouTube and you're like, you know, what? I'm going to focus on my photography. I'm going to focus on all the social media work that I want to do. Uh, can you tell people what what do you do on social media? You talk about I talk about how you're a social media influencer. You do a lot of work on social media. What is it exactly that you do? What is exactly that I do? Well, Usually, well, I worked for this um, this nonprofit organization a year and a half ago called Public Allies. It's based on like social justice um, change. People are passionate about social justice issues, so I will create uh, content around that, like on police brutality, gun violence, certification, global warming, and needs going on in our local community, and so, so things of that nature. And like for me. I have, and like you mentioned before, I have a photography page, a photography and videography page where I show off my photography. But I, the type of photography that I do do is that I do street, I do documentary, I do lifestyle, and then I do um, build those three. That's awesome, man. And like I said, you guys don't have to just take his word for it because all the links are down here in the description below. So you talk about photography, which is an amazing form of art. How long has photography been a part of your life? It's really started during the pandemic, and that's actually why I kind of like took my time away from YouTube to like focus on other avenues of myself that I want to explore. Like I want to explore photography and just seeing how the dead of a ghost town my city was during the pandemic. It made me, excuse me, it made me like go out and like get a camera, like take pictures of like my city, take pictures like of my neighborhood take pictures of like people in general because I also do like advanced photography as well as I okay. to mention I do like like birthday parties I've even done like videos of like birthday parties as well and it started to become like a another passion of me that I didn't know I had that I wanted to like get it got into well especially when you capture that perfect photo you know, whether you're doing realism, whether you're doing a party, whether you're doing a wedding, a graduation, when you capture that perfect photo that it completely shows the joy on someone's face, or like you talked about in your community, you do a lot of work with nonprofits, you know, when you, sometimes there's that beauty in that darkness, you know, um, and a lot of the things you're working for are things that, you know, with the social issues and the social justice issues that need to be fought for, um, you know, police brutality, climate change, these are all things that are very, very important to us as a society. We need to keep focusing on these things to try to make it better. Now, um, do you still work with that nonprofit or is that, are you done Unfortunately, with that Unfortunately, I do not. The company briefly shut, um, shut down. That's past okay. 
unfortunately. It's it's really hard, especially in this day and age, to or, to work a nonprofit successfully. So I get that. But um, your activism is obviously a part of you. Would you ever consider, you know, joining another nonprofit to fight for the same type of issues? Oh, definitely, yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. So um, now we talked about, you know, you did your YouTube reviews. You've done, you know, a lot of photography work. You do a lot of social media stuff. But you are a big horror fan, which is something yeah. else we talked about. And in order for you to be a horror fan, Anthony, horror had to start for you somewhere. So now I would like to go back to the past and talk about what got you started in the horror genre, your first horror movie. And Anthony, your first horror movie was? A little movie that a lot of people may or may not know about a killer doll named Junkie <laughs> called Child's Play. Actually, as a matter of fact, it started back in 2004, and I remember this so vividly that me mm-hmm. and my great grandmother, we went to go see The Incredibles, right? Okay. And, and I remember like us going to the theater, and there was like this big poster for See the Chucky, where like you see like Chucky like point his finger up to the little baby doll. And I was just so mesmerized by that poster. I was like, what? Even as a four year old, I'm like, what in the heck is this Chucky movie? And I asked my nan, my nana, can we go see Chucky's head? But she was like, no, no, because she, she, she pretty much already knew what Chucky was about. Right. And, and then, like, years later, fast forward to, like, 2008, I was, like, seven going on eight years old. Uh, my mom was watching TV, and I came downstairs to watch TV, and it was actually Child's Play 3. It was, like, okay. after the last half of the movie where we see, like, Chucky, like, chasing Tyler and Andy at the carnival. And I didn't really get to, get to see much of Chucky uh, since then because I didn't really get a lot out of it. But it wasn't until like, I caught Child Play on TV and then I watched the movie all the way through just to like see what I missed and stuff. And then watching that movie, I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Like how in the world were they able to like create this killer doll with a foul mouth and a wit sense of humor work in a movie and this movie and this movie actually as a matter of fact what really like started was my actually my real start uh for the love for the 80s mm-hmm. as a matter of fact yeah. absolutely and it's funny because the first child's play film still to this day is so influential and um it the the themes in the movie the comedy it's not as funny as the other ones but the comedy there does land it is still very scary the kills are extremely creative it's just an amazing, amazing film. So while we're talking about the first Child's Play, we know that you watched it for the first time you know, as a young boy. Um, do you remember who you were watching it with when you had finally found it and caught it on TV all the way through? Uh, that, it was actually by myself, I believe. Ooh, yes, actually even by myself. scarier then. Yeah, yeah, I think it was like on Encore or Sarga, one of those channels I was watching it on. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was watching it on TV at eight years old and just immediately like fell in love with it. And it, do you think that because Andy Barkley was right around the same age as you at this time, do you think that that had an impact on you that you're watching one of your peers in the film? Yes. And the fact that like he had a single mother and I had a single mother too. I think that that's where like that connection came, came from. Sure. And the fact that like he wanted this good guy doll so much. And I, and I remember being at that age that wanted like my favorite toy or like wanted like my favorite, like whatever was popular at the time when I was young. And so that's mm-hmm. where like that move that where I gravitated towards in that movie, even though the movie sure. like, was 20 years like before, like when I first watched, when I watched it, um, that's, that's why I felt like me and Andy Barkley sort of had like, like I, 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 I related to Andy Barkley. Yes. And I think that, you know, obviously me as a young boy, I felt the same way. I'm watching someone that's my age that's, you know, facing this killer doll, going through the streets of Chicago by himself, you know, like all these things. And I'm like, damn, this kid's a badass. I want to be like him. You know what I mean? Um, it's very impactful. Like I said, a lot of very impactful scenes throughout Child's Play. But what would you say the scene was that affected you the most? One of the most iconic scenes ever in horror history when Karen Barkley was trying to get Chucky to talk to me to see if Andy would, tr- would tell her the truth or like if we were making up these lies. So when she picked Chucky up and just tell if, well, well, she put a match in the fireplace and it put the whole Chucky up in front of the fireplace and told, it told him. I said, talk to me, damn it, or else I'm going to throw you in the fire. You stupid bitch. <laughs> 
filthy slut! Did you fuck with me? In that moment, that's the first time that we see Chucky come to life as the Dow. Yeah. You know, like we've seen Charles Lee Ray, you know, but at this point we haven't seen Chucky actually move yet. You know, a lot of it's POV shots and Andy telling us what's going on. But this is the first time we actually see the Dow come to life. So absolutely, what an iconic scene. And you're right. I still think that this is one of the most iconic scenes in horror history. I think everybody that is a fan of horror would always talk about this scene because especially as kids, we see the batteries drop out of the box and you're just like, oh shit. He's been running with the first no batteries. Yeah, that was the first red flag for um, Karen at that moment. So like, oh man, like Andy might be right this time. Andy might be right. Right. Um, so we talked about which scene it was that affected you the most, which is one of the most impactful scenes in horror. But what would you say your favorite scene from the OG Child's Play is? Oh man, that is a tough question. Um, it's got to be that. Um, I love the final showdown, like mm-hmm. where like Chucky is trying to put a soul to Andy, and then like Karen, and then Mike come in and then save him, and then like Chucky's fighting off against all those three. He gets burnt in the fireplace. Um, you know, he gets shot like from his leg, his arm, his head, and. I love that whole like final act sequence. And I also love just like, like how you talk about the POV shot um, earlier. I also love like the POV shots where you see like, and um, Chucky is, uh, is about to kill um, Andy's babysitter. And, yeah. And where like he hits the hammer uh, on her face and then she falls out the window. It is so many scenes. And like the scene where he, <laughs> this is a very funny one when he's, when he's attacking Mike in the car when he's just like stabbing him on the below the seats where he's like he can almost like stab his ass I love that scene that scene is so hilarious yeah and it's it's again one of these movies that it is so hard to pick a favorite scene or the scene that is most effective because there's so many throughout the whole movie that are great great moments in history now child's play is part of a franchise we have a slew of movies and a new tv show that is out now so whenever we talk about a franchise i always ask which movie in the child's play franchise is your personal favorite honestly out right here it's usually like i often go back and forth between the first film and child's play 2 these two often go neck and neck for me and if you were also want to ask me which era of Chucky is my favorite in the franchise, it's because it's all I view it as like three eras. There's the original trilogy, child play trilogy. There's the family duology with Brian and Seed, and there's a, near which I call the modern era of Chucky, which is Curse and Cult and the TV series. So the original trilogy era of Chucky is my favorite, and then favorite film, like I said before, is is a tie between one and two. Right. And I've always said, anybody that knows me, anybody that knows the channel knows, Child's Play is my favorite horror franchise. And um, you can't go wrong with any of these movies. I would say, personally, the weakest one for me is probably uh, Seed of Chucky. I still well, love... We can all agree on that one. <laughs> right. I still yeah. love Seed of Chucky. And one of my good friends, Celise, over at Sweet and Spooky, that's one of her favorites in the franchise. And I will say that the representation in the movie is a little off. But, man, the kills are great. I love the kills in this movie. It's a little too over the top with its comedy moments where it tries to be funny and it doesn't really land for me. But like Red Man getting eviscerated. Oh, or, he got um, gutted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or um, the Britney Spears uh, looking like. Uh, <laughs> yes. Or um, John Waters when the acid, oh, yeah, when the acid falls on his face. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's so many great moments in Cedar Chucky. Even though it's my least favorite in the franchise, I still love Cedar Chucky. I really, really do. Um, so we've talked about, you know, the franchise. And a question I usually ask people, would you like to see your first tour movie remade today? Well, that just happened in 2019 with Child's Play what? 2019. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> Wait, you're the Child's Play remake? What? <laughs> so I take it you're not a fan of the Child's Play remake. Wait, what, what Child's Play remake, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> what child? Wait, wait, I don't think there was a Child's Play remake. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, see, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a, I am a big fan. I think the, the kills in it are stupendous. Um, I like the fact that they took it and made it their own. Um, but, again, the Dow looks fucking stupid. But, you know, overall... <laughs> it is an understatement. <laughs> overall, I think it's a very solid film. I think it's a very solid reboot. Because, for me, I don't want to see what already happened in the first one. 
I've already seen that. And you're not going to top it. So take that idea and make it your own. And in my opinion, they did that very well with the Child's Play remake. Some things could have been better. I've always said if they would have called the movie Buddy from the world of Child's Play, it could have been such a better movie. Such a even, Just that title change alone would have brought in a lot more people because they're not expecting Chucky. Name it something else. Have it be a Buddy doll. Have it be in the world of Child's Play, but not an actual Child's Play, you know, not part of the Chucky timeline. I think it would have been a lot better that way. Um, so we talked about, you know, your first horror movie and what that means to you and the Child's Play remake that is non-existent to you. Mm -hmm. But now I want to throw you a little bit of a curveball here, Anthony. My little buddy Ghostface is here, and he has a question for you. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite scary movie, Anthony? Uh, what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Favorite horror movie of all time? Actually, it is not Child's Play. It is another little movie that we may or may not um, have heard of called Psycho, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Ooh, love it. Very fantastic movie. You could argue that was the start of the slasher genre. Yes. So I will never be upset to talk about Psycho. Actually, I did a whole episode. Uh, didn't see that coming episode on Psycho. Um, some of the most brilliant, whether you love it, you know the movie or not, some of the most brilliant writing of any horror movie ever. And I'm not just talking about the ending. The whole movie is just brilliant. Brilliant yeah. movie. So cannot argue with you there. One of the very few movies... I own on 4K. I'm not a huge 4K guy. Really? I love the restorations. I love all that, but I'm an old school VCR guy. Give me a little bit of tracking. Keep it yeah. a little done. <laughs> you know, keep, keep, my, uh, keep my imagination going. So, um, man, Anthony, I've had a great time talking to you about Child's Play, Psycho, and all of Anthony's social media links. I want to remind you guys, they are down in the description below. So make sure you're following him on social media to stay up to date on him and everything that he has coming up for you in the future. Now, before I let you go, we always back, bounce back to the same question. Uh, we're going to go back to Child's Play. And what we're going to do is rank this movie on a skull count. Now, we're not ranking it on acting, production, score, direction, nothing like that. What we're doing here, Anthony, is strictly ranking this movie on how much it affected you on your first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. Uh, Anthony, what would your ranking of child's play be it'd be four and a half you say skull ranking right yes four and a half skull ranking out of five yeah when I mean, obviously without child's play you may not be the person you are today so Definitely. i completely understand and i respect that and uh, like i said my favorite horror franchise i totally get where you're coming from uh and it's, it's amazing that don mancini has been a part of it all these years so can't wait for season three of Chucky. If you guys haven't caught up on those yet, please make sure you do. Um, Anthony, please don't go anywhere, my friend. I got a couple more questions for you. Awesome. Um, everybody else, as always, if you haven't already, please make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and follow Slash Hammer Horror on social media. We'd love to have you along for the ride and keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.